For over a decade and a half, Pastor Charles Karuku has traveled the globe with the great call and mandate on his life. He has been anointed to proclaim the saving, healing, and delivering power of God to train you on how to work the works of God. In stadiums, arenas, and churches around the world, thousands have been impacted by God and changed forever by the anointing. The lame walk, the deaf hear, the blind see as God's power is released to set the captives free. As you stay tuned to this program, expect God to minister to every need in your life. Your family, your health, your life, and finances should never be the same again. Get ready for your miracle. Now, here is Pastor Charles Karupu. atmosphere is changing. God expects you and I to learn how to stand in a storm. And all what you need to understand is that when you have done everything, the only thing left to do is to stand. This morning I want to talk about standing in the storm. And I want to go right into the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 25. Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 25. Standing in a storm. When the whirlwind passes, when the whirlwind passes by, the wicked is no more, but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. In other words, another translation says, but the righteous stands. But the righteous stands. Let me read it from the New International Version. It says, when the storm has swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous stand firm forever. The righteous stand firm in a storm. Amen. What is a storm? Maybe the definition you need to hear is this, a storm is what you just came out of or what you're just about to get into or what you are going through right now. A storm is a violent disturbance of atmosphere with the strong winds, rain, thunder, lightning, or for Minnesota, snow. A storm, it has something to do with the atmospheric pressure changing as warm air comes in and collides with the cold mass of air, and of course, hot air rises. So the hot air begins rising, the warm air begins rising, and as it rises, it rises at a speed and begins to gather speeds and begin to cause the weed to blow faster. And as those things happen, there are a lot of electrons and a lot of changing of electro electrons that happens in the process. And, and before you realize, the weeds are catching speed and the air is getting turbulent. Everything is turbulent. In other words, it is because the atmosphere is changing. So a storm comes because atmosphere is changing. Says changes in the air. When change is happening, the atmosphere changes. And the weeds and storms begin to gather. The Bible says the righteous stands in the storm. God expects you and I to learn how to stand in a storm. Somebody say, I'm built for these times. There are houses in the south that we know about during the Katrina. They were not built to stand a storm of that intensity. 
And we understand New Orleans and how the houses were swept away by a storm. But after they went into a rebuilding mode, they designed houses that can stand any level of a storm. Even if the levees give in and all the walls around the waters cave in, those houses are even designed to float on water if necessary. There is a purpose why houses are built with a storm in mind. And God designed you and I as a righteous man, a woman of God. We were designed to be able to stand a storm. We were designed and built with a storm in mind. The God who called us, he understands even if you are in a storm right now, a storm is coming and because you are his man, he wants you to stand. In fact, we were even designed to fall. Hmm. The Bible said a righteous man is going to fall how many times? Seven times. But the Bible says they will fall, but they will not stay down. They will rise up again. We were built with a storm in mind. We were built because God knew even if devastation comes and we fall, that we will stand up again. I want you to say to the enemy, Satan, I want you to know when this dust settles, I will be found standing. The Bible says, or concerning a storm in the book of Matthew 7. I love this one. I love this one. I want to read it. Matthew 7 verse 24 through verse 25. We were built to stand a storm. We were built to stand a Texas tornado. We were built to stand a tsunami. We were built to stand even Hurricane Katrina. Are you listening to me? We were also built to stand at September 11. No matter what happens, we are built to stand. We are built to last. And the Bible says, therefore, verse 24, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who, was, who, who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended. The floods came. The weeds blew and beat on that house. It did not fall. Say that with me. It did not fall. Say that with me. It did not fall. Because you are not going to fall under this intense storm in Jesus' name. The Bible says that the house did not fall. For it was founded on the rock. It was built to stand a storm. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, God expects you and I to stand a storm. And this is what he says. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And then the next verse says, stand therefore. In other words, I have given you the armor that when the evil day comes, you will stand. And having done all that you can do, you will still stand. In other words, you will never say that I don't have anything else to do. I can, there's nothing I can do. I give up. No, you're going to say in the evil day after you've done everything, Lord, I will still stand. I am still standing. I'm still waiting. I'm still standing. I am still standing. And all what you need to understand is that when you have done everything, the only thing left to do is to stand. Praise God. You will never fall, the Bible says. You will stand. Because even if you fall, you stand up again. The final thing 
that you do after you've done everything is to stand again. Is anybody listening to me? I'm saying stand in the storm. I don't know what happened this morning during the time of offering. When we talked, when, when Pastor Zipporah talked about, about, you know, about standing. But I want to say this to you. It, it hit my heart. It just confirmed my, in my spirit that all what we need to do, even if it is in the marriage, it is to stand in that marriage. Amen. It is to stand in the famine. It is to stand because I know one thing. Storms don't last. Hmm. How many know storms, they come sweeping through the town? Tsunami takes seconds. Its effects can last for long, but the storm itself, it just passes by violently within minutes or seconds. Most storms last for seconds. Storms do not last long. If you stand long enough, amen, you will outlast the storm. One pastor used to tell me, the storm found us, and the storm will go and leave us standing. It came, it found us, and if we can stand long enough, it will come to pass. Amen? The book of Exodus 14, verse 13, again, God expects you, say, God expects me, to stand. God has designed you to stand. God has, God has built you to stand. God expects you to stand. And the Bible says in Exodus 14 verse 13, Stand still. Hmm. Stand still and see the salvation or the deliverance of the Lord. The longer you stand, the more you will see the deliverance of the Lord. Are you listening to the preacher? I came this morning to encourage you. Exodus 14 verse 13. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. I'm coming to that. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who, who you see today, the storm that you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Only stand. Only stand. Standing in a storm. Standing in a storm. I want you to see two reactions in a storm. There is a reaction in the book of Mark, chapter 37. Jesus reacted to a storm of a, of a certain kind in a certain way. I want you to see it. Mark 4, verse 37. How many are in a storm right now and you are saying this is really helping me? Standing in a storm. Mark 4, verse 37. I want you to look at this with me. And a great weed storm or a great storm arose. And the waves beat into the boat so that it was already feeling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Tisha, don't you care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the weed. Say he rebuked the weed. He told the weed, be still. And the weed ceased. And there was a great calm. There is a type of a storm that you can rebuke it and it will go away. But let me explain something. Not all storms can be rebuked. Are you listening to me? Not all storms can be rebuked. Because some storms, 
you need to stand in them and let them lift you. But there are two ways you can react to a storm. There was a time I was in a storm um, and, and, and I could not stop it. I, I was praying, I rebuked it, and I, I called one of my friends. I said to him, Pastor, you know what? We, I need your help right now because we, I'm, I'm in a storm and, and I've been praying, I've been waiting on God and the storm keeps coming so strong. And he said to me, do not rebuke it again. He said to me, stretch your wings like an eagle and let that storm lift you high. Are you listening to me? But I want to show you how to rebuke a storm when a storm is rebukable. What is the sign of a rebukable storm? A rebukable storm, as you see here, the water was filling the boat. And it was about to capsize the boat. This was a demonic, very, very demonic weed that was, was, like a, was like the marine spirit walking through the man of Gadarene who was on the other side. He was attacking Jesus and his entourage as they were coming to rescue him. And, and the spirits in him were resisting the deliverance and they were coming after him like that. There are times when a storm will come because the enemy is on the attack on your life and it is becoming very, very destructive. And to stop the destruction, you need to rebuke the storm. But there are other storms that they are not that destructive, but, but you can look at them and you see they are coming from the enemy, but now you find a way to take advantage of that storm and let that storm soar you up higher like an eagle. Amen. One of those storms is when people criticize you, when people speak evil against you. Amen. If people are speaking evil against you, if people are giving you false accusations, let them go ahead. Amen. Because that is a sign of a promotion that is on the way. That is a sign that if you spread your wings and stay cool under that storm, God is going to lift you higher because you have refused to take offense and you have chosen to go on the high road. Amen. But let me go back to a storm that needs to be rebuked. A storm that you need to rebuke and, and, and tear it, be still and obey. We need to be that people that cannot be intimidated by Satan. How many know that we have weapons? We are not, we are not just that kind of bunch of Christians that put, sit on our hands and do nothing. How many know that we can fight? How many know that the violent can take it by force? How many know that we have weapons of warfare that are not carnal, but they are mighty with God and we can pull down strongholds? We need to understand that when a storm comes, it's time for a reaction of war. It's a declaration of war. And we need to understand that Satan is on a war against us. And we need to wage war on the devil's war against our war without fear or compromise. Because we are armed and we are dangerous. And so if you awaken me in warfare, you better be ready for the consequences. There are a couple of ways I want to show you how to do it. Isaiah 59 verse 19. When the storm comes, how do you react? You rebuke it. Isaiah 59 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 59 verse number 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. In other words, when Satan comes knocking on your door, you better show him who you are and how you can fight him back. And you better lift a standard of the blood. 
And one of the things that, that can help this church, the intercession, is to look at the storms that are happening in the body and they need to launch a counter attack and they need to lift a hedge of protection. They need to lift a standard of the blood around this church and allowed the family and allowed God's people because when we know we are in a battle, we should respond fire for fire. We should respond. And we need to be able to know how to launch spiritual warfare. When we are under attack, we need to know how to respond and launch battles. Proverbs 18 verse 10 talks about it. After lifting a standard, when the enemy comes in, lift the standard. When the enemy comes in, lift the standard. In other words, when you see the enemy attacking, lift a standard in prayer. Increase and intensify your prayer. Increase and intensify your, your, your declaration. Call for a time of fasting. Increase and intensify. In other words, when the enemy escalates warfare, escalate in prayer. Escalate in, in, in fasting. Escalate in responding with the word of God. Escalate in the other realm by, by, by lifting the standard. Somebody say, lift the standards. Somebody say, lift the standards. The Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. He comes in like a flood. The Spirit of God always goes above and lifts up a standard against him. There's another way you can fight back. Proverbs 18 verse 10. Most of you know this by heart. Proverbs 18 verse number 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous land to it and they are saved. And the same is with Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When the war comes, when the crisis comes, run to the name of the Lord. Let me show you safety in the name of the Lord. And running to the name of the Lord, it's not because you are scared. How many know that? We are not running away to the name of the, running into the name of the Lord, into the tower where we can be saved because we are scared. No, that's not the reason. In fact, we are running there because we know he is the only refuge. He is the only, that's the only place where we are safe. That's the only place where we can be able to fight back. In other words, if I know that by you drawing me into your turf, you beat me. If I'm Vikings, I will not let you draw me into rubble field. I want to draw you to the Metrodome. I want to draw you to my turf. I want to draw you to my territory. In other words, when we are in a, in a, in a crisis, we want to draw that enemy and the battle into, into the place where we are strong. It is in the law that we are strong. We want the enemy to fight us in the place of our strength where we can be able to take care of him. Praise God. We are learning how to stand in a storm. And I came with good news for you that your storm is over. When we come to this understanding that the Lord is in the midst of the storm, that storm turns around and what the devil has meant for evil, God begins to turn it around for you good. And this day, you're going to experience the power of the evil plan of the enemy being turned around for your good. I come with good news that your storm, your financial storm is over. Your storm in your health is over. Your storm in the house is over. And when you come out of it, you are going to experience the goodness of God in his power to fully restore that which the devil has stolen. And so I want to pray with you because 
many miracles are going to take place when we pray. We believe God that in the midst of the storm, there is going to be a recompense of the things that have been stored in a sevenfold restitution is coming your way in Jesus' name. I want to believe God with you for a mighty outpouring of His healing grace as we are seeing God do things in other parts of the world and even here in IOC in Bansville. I want to believe God right now with you that He is going to visit you in a special way in the midst of your storm. He will release His presence that changes a situation. Let me agree with you wherever you are right now. Will you pray with me in Jesus' name? Father, I ask you for each of us that's in this audience listening to this message. Father, I pray for anyone, the sound of my voice that's going through a storm, that in the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy that your storm is over. I prophesy that the power of God is in the midst of your storm. His presence is like the presence of God with the Shandrach, Meshach, and Abednego right in the midst of the fiery furnace. That God is going to show His goodness and turn this situation around and cause it to work for your good in Jesus' name. And now I prophesy this new season of the year that God, you are turning things around for your people and you are giving each of us a brand new beginning in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to thank God for you. Go to the phone right now. Get on the number on your screen. Get on the website. I want you to let me know what God is doing right now. You are in a storm and the storm is over. God is working a miracle right in the midst of that storm. And I also want to welcome you to IOC every Wednesday at 7 o'clock and every Sunday at 10 a.m. We are seeing God moving among us in a very powerful way. And I want you to come and enjoy and be a part of what God is doing here. If you're sick in your body, if you have a loved one that needs to be touched of God, this is the house with the atmosphere for healing. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here. We are making an offer of a very special message on how to stand in a storm. And you can call the number on your screen and you can find out how you can get that message that will bless you and help you in the midst of anything that you are going through. Remember this as we can't keep coming to your home that God specializes with impossible situations. There is nothing impossible with our God. I'll see you right here again for healing and victory today. God bless.